Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Sailor Moon R for the Game Boy, heading right on into part two, and I gotta confess, I'm not in the best of moods right now, because I just recorded this already, and, you know, make the video, I think everything's all nice and good, putting it out hard this time, and I play through with Sailor Mercury, I'm choosing her again, go through the entire game, get ready to make the video, name the video, you know, getting ready to process it. And the recording screwed up. I had this jagged, diagonal line in the recording. I'm like, hmm, that's weird. Uh, turns out, don't know how, uh, Cam Studio switched the codec on me that it was using to do video compression, and the codec it switched to does not get along well with Game Boy games. So I lost the entire video. And some golden commentary, of course. So, um, uh, not in the best of moods, but if I, I know if I don't record it again right away, I'm not going to feel like doing it later. So, here I am. Anyway, um, God, half my commentary from the first time is irrelevant now. I was saying how, since this is the first time I've played hard in a year, uh, I chose Sailor Mercury, because I basically think she's the overall best character. Um, her attack has the largest hitbox, and since all the characters' attacks do the same amount of damage... Therefore, the character with the largest attack radius is pretty much the best character. As you can see here, if you can't tell, she's shooting a bunch of little bubbles there, so it's based on her um, bubble spray attack. Um, but yeah, and she's also the shortest scout. Not by a lot, but if you put them side by side, it's noticeable. Not by a lot, but again, you take every advantage you can get in uh, platformers like this. Um... I was saying uh, back in the commentary again, talking about favorite Sailor Scouts, and um, with Katsy here, you'll notice if you hit her, if you can hit her before she launches an actual attack, she'll just cartwheel back and forth. Anyway, back on track, um, I was talking about favorite Sailor Scouts before, and I was saying how my favorite pretty much changes from year to year now, but uh, back when I was a kid, you know, back in 96 when Sailor Moon started airing here, when I was the ripe old age of 11. Um, can't do math. 12, yeah, 1984. 12, yeah, that's 12. Anyway, um, when I was a kid, I was saying that my favorite Sailor Scout was always Sailor Mercury. Uh, I liked, you know, how she, you know, she was the bookworm. She was bookworm. She was the nerd genius type, and I really liked that. I appreciated that there was a character that didn't rely on brute strength to get things done. And she was my favorite Sailor Scout through, ow, my whole childhood, pretty much. And a couple years uh, beyond that, I uh, still really like her. Um, the only problem I ever had with her, uh, I hate this jump. you got to be careful here, because these iron balls take away three hearts. Ow, ow, in hard mode. So you just got to be careful. I'm doing really bad now. Of course, I was doing great in the first playthrough, but anyway... Uh, Sailor Mercury had, um, her bubble spray was pretty much just a defensive ability in the original s series. I mean, she didn't really get an attack until she picked up, um, Shine Aqua Illusion and, um, Aqua Rhapsody later on. Um, I mean, her attack was basically either a distraction or purely defensive. And I liked that at the time. Um, again, you know, getting stuff done with your brains instead of brute force and all that. I definitely appreciated that. And please, God, don't let me die here. Because I don't think there's a checkpoint anywhere before this. Skills. But yeah, you know, I always really liked her. Alright, we get back to Rubius, who I believe in the last take killed me four times? Let's see if I can get that to zero. Yeah, well, not hitting the jump button isn't going to help. If you're quick, you can use your special attack to knock the debris out of the... Ow! Or just take it to the face. I mean, whichever works for you. Knocking it out of the way with your special attack or your face. It's all pretty much the same. And he better not hit me again. Okay, there's, there's, there's takeout number one. But the beautiful thing about it, as of course I mentioned before, God, I hate losing a video, 
uh, you get infinite free guys for the first three bosses, so it's pretty much just a battle of attrition until you can get the pattern, right? Ah, looks like it might be uh, yet another round after this. Not doing so hot here either. I think hitting him with his own big oil drum thingy should, like, insta-kill him. That would only make sense. Take that, Rubius. You got a much better death than you deserved. Unlike in the show, when you're on your little UFO, and then the whole thing just exploded because everyone hated you. Anyway. Out uh, with these enemies now. See, this is like... It's, it's so disappointing to lose a video, because in my first take of doing this as Sailor Mercury, I learned a bunch of stuff fighting bosses, too, like, as I was recording it. And that's, that's part of the reason I like doing LPs, you know? Learning things with the audience, you know? Like, oh, I never knew that! I mean, you know, a lot of you are learning stuff just from watching this for the first time. You've probably never heard of it, never seen it, didn't know it existed. But um, the fact that I can learn something alongside with you, that's always fun. And I'm pretty sad that I missed out on that, but it happened. And I'm probably going to complain about it through the rest of this playthrough. Oh man, never had that many of those on screen before. Ha, ah, auto-scrolling for the win. Okay, now, Esmeralda is one of the people I learned something about. She can, apparently, I'll watch it not work this time, just to make me look like an idiot. Apparently, she cannot hurt you while she's flashing. I don't know about her fan, but her, her touching her and her physical kick, see, doesn't hurt you when she's flashing. So use that to your advantage. Hit her, ow, that time it didn't work, but... I think that's because I was in a weird part of the hitbox. But if you catch just the tip of her kick while she's... Fl okay, well, see? See? It worked the whole last time, worked half of this time, and now that, eh, just to make me look stupid. I still hold by that, because that's how I killed her last time. So there's got to be something to it. I'm just not seeing it. Still, just to be safe, it's better just to... um. Hit her, then, okay, see, now that's not even working. I guess I'll shut up now, because all the stuff I thought I learned, I didn't. Okay, she didn't take me out at all in the last video, and now she takes me out twice. I guess that's making up for uh, taking down Rubius on the second attempt this time. Oh, this fight reminds me of the fourth boss in Ninja Gaiden Shadow. Because uh, it threw a fan that looked pretty much just like that thing at me. And it boomeranged back just like that. So it's kind of weird. Take that, skank. Alright, and now we're back with the unicorn chicks that kind of look like they're holding a um, tuning fork. I just realized that as I was going through here again. So I'm like, yeah, it looks like they're holding something. And then I looked at it, I'm like, it looks like a tuning fork. And I don't remember the Yoma in the show having a tuning fork, so I assume that's just an oddity in the sprite. I mean, she's definitely holding something, but I don't remember her having a tuning fork. Of course, I could be wrong. God knows that happens enough. I didn't need that full... Okay, well, now I do, so... Go back up and get that. Okay, in hard mode, <laughs> good god. Don't let those collapsing ceiling things hit you. They will take away five hearts. Ah, I found that out the hard way on the last take. Too busy talking, trying to get away from the undines. Thing hits me, I go from full life to almost dead. I was like, okay, well, not doing that again. And of course, a bunch of life up there that I, oh, whoa, that was close, that I don't need. Starting with Sapphire here, we're not going to get our one-up roses. 
But I again, now watch him not do it either. I learned an interesting trick with him last time. If you remember his death laser and the undines that he summons, I noticed that if you hit, if you let them hit you a lot, they kill you. Okay, well, this is just me dying to being sloppy. But if you leave one Undyne alive, Sapphire will never do his powered up laser of death thing. So we're convenient. Leave one alive, and you'll never have to worry about his laser. Which, again, in hard mode, does a lot of damage. Okay, <laughs> I let go of the crouch button and she still just stood there. Fantastic. This is like Ninja Gaiden Shadow again. Uh, just doing fine, and then all of a sudden I start losing the, like my controller. Don't let the death beam or that little splash thing hit you. It does a ton of damage. It'll it'll kill me at four hearts, I'm pretty sure. Well, this is lucky. Get a few oh god, oh god, oh god. Yep, I knew there wasn't any gonna be any dodge in that. And of course, Sapphire, you didn't kill me at all in my last playthrough, and now just to make me look bad, you're taking me to school here. Alright. I say I've probably about died as many times as I did in my first playthrough, just in different spots. Ruby has killed me a bunch the first time and only once here. As Maraud didn't kill me and neither did Sapphire. So it's pretty much making up for it. Now Diamond I got through on my first attempt on the first take of this, which that was the surprising one. Because Diamond's hard even on normal. He almost killed me. So the fact that I took him out on the first try on hard, I was pretty happy with that. That one-up rose, I've I've come to the conclusion that it's a trap. Um, I tried to get it, and every time I got it, I just died. So, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. I uh, thought that was a lot closer than it was. Getting hit by stupid park rides. You also missed my vow never to die at this platform again after I died to it three times in the Sailor Mars video. Now that I think about it, I don't even think I went into Diamond with full life the first playthrough. I think I was missing a heart or two. All the more impressive. Alright, Diamond, let's do this. I won using an extremely complex strategy called walk towards him and shoot him in the face. Hyper spam! Yeah! Spammers win! I hate your ugly face, Mini Moon, but it's alright. Okay, there is the second completed playthrough with Sailor Mercury. Uh, hopefully this one actually, you know, works correctly. Changing the codex seemed to solve the problem. Good news is this video is a lot shorter than the first one was. I just looked at 840 seconds. Uh, I think the first take I finished at almost 1,000 seconds, so we have that. And anyway, that's the second playthrough of Sailor Moon R using Sailor Mercury. I will be doing Sailor Moon last, as somehow that seems only fitting. And since Sailor Venus and Sailor Moon have a very... Now their attacks are basically identical, I'll probably be doing Sailor Venus next. So, thanks for watching and join me next time. Uh, part 3, well actually, well, the third part of the walkthrough, which is part 4 of the series, will be Sailor Venus. Thanks for watching, I'll see you later.